So we started, uh, we're starting this month a series on prayer. And prayer is, it's an amazing thing. But it's also kind of, it can be a mysterious thing because some people make it really scary, spooky. Some people, you know, it's like, well, you know, I'm just talking to Bob, you know. That's God's, you know, nickname, Bob. Hey, Bob, let's, you know, help me here. And it can be an offensive thing, but I want want you to know that I think the Bible's very clear on it. And and there's many ways of praying. And we're going to go look at the Lord's Prayer, but the... Growing up in the church, and I think one of the reasons I pray the way that I pray is, you know, your experiences that you have with God and with other people who pray. But I grew up in the Presbyterian church, and as a a small boy growing up uh, in every Sunday, the pastor wears a robe. And he goes up, and he's the only one allowed in this pulpit where you preach the word. There's another pulpit over here where the announcements are made. I mean, it's like the Holy of Holies. And I grew up with prayers like, let us all bow our head. Most high Godhead, we beseech thee now. Your servants are coming before you with bent spirit and willing hearts. And so as a little boy growing up going, they go, will you pray, Mark? No. (laughs) I can't do that. I don't even know what beseech thee means. You know, so, you know, so, so you grow up in a fear to pray. And, and, and you know, and then you get to the other guy and it's like, you know, they're just talking to Bob. Going, we know what God is. Um, so if you grew up in, in the church, this little thing, it, I have a little video on ways different people pray. Now, I'm, I'm not saying any of these are wrong. But I want us to be able to laugh at ourselves. And if you're married and your husband or your wife prays one of these ways, poke them and say, that's you. (laughs) And it's not wrong. It's just you. So let's take a look at ways you can pray. Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day, Lord Jesus, and all your wonderful, Lord Jesus, things that you, Lord Jesus, do for us, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay, Uh, I just want to thank you for Annie and Sarah and Molly. I know that with your strength, we can change the world! We can change the world! Mercury, Venus. Earth, Mars, and we give you the praise. Yes, Jesus. We cannot wait to see what you're going to yes. do today. And we are excited. Oh! Aunt Margaret's really nasty hangnail. And I worship you forever. God, I, uh, I just, uh, um, toilet paper, deodorant. Speaking of, I need to get some more. Hey, God, uh, thanks for bringing us here today. Thank you for all the stuff that you're going to do in our lives. Uh, the way you're going to work is absolutely amazing, and we are super amped for everything that you hold for us. I just don't know what to say. Hey, God. Man, you're great. Help me find a mate. Amen. Look at this. Salt, garlic salt, sea salt, kosher salt. God, just... Just let your doves of knowledge flow from under our fingernails of repentance. And we have all been there. (laughs) Wow. It's, uh, and you know what? None of them are wrong. It's, 
the, the, the thing about prayer is that it's many, many things. It's us asking for help. It's us honoring the Lord. And depending, you know, what you have experienced, that also leads to the way you pray. How you know, you know, what you know of the Lord. And we're going to go through those. But, you know, you go to a prayer meeting and, you know, we think, oh, well, we do it this way. We hold hands. We do it that way. We you know, stand up, sit down. I want you to know that they're all right. It's just how we approach prayer. And we need to understand that the different ways we've experienced God many times is how we end up praying. Or the very situation that we're in. So there is no right or wrong <clears throat> when we do this. The key thing is that uh, it's people who... They say, well, we should pray a lot. We should pray a lot. The, the, the question that I'm going to put in the small group is that do you pray so often and do you pray the same thing that it's just a routine? It's, it's, it's a memorized poem. Because the Bible is very clear. Jesus was clear about saying, listen, that's not how to pray. Don't make it a routine. Uh, Jesus taught us how to pray. So he's saying, I don't want you to make this a routine. Very clearly. He said it needs to be fresh. And so he, we're going to see what, how Jesus taught us. He goes, the disciples go, Lord, teach us how to pray. And so the Lord gives us this prayer. We call it the Lord's Prayer. But it really should be called the Disciples' Prayer because the disciples ask, how should we pray? And people have taken this and they've made it the rule, the standard, this is how we pray. So every time they pray, our Father who art in heaven, holy or hallowed be thy name. And they think that the, that the Lord was saying, this is the blueprint. I want you to know this is the outline. It's the outline of prayer. It is what it is to refer back to. Did you make this point? Did you make that point? Not did you say the exact words. Because... The, the scripture says, look, I want you to pray things that are relevant. Relevant. Who are re I'm, I am the ever-present God dealing with your ever-present need that changes from this day to that day to this month to that year. To what situation you're in. So we're going to see that the Lord's prayer is being prayed, though you may not say the exact words. And I think it's going to be quite freeing to us when we do this. So when the Lord says, this is how you should pray, it is not word for word, but a template. So it actually, it's Matthew 6, 27, where the Lord says, you know, when you're praying, do not use meaningless repetition. That even means our Father who are, you know, I mean, this is, give us this day our daily bread. What is your daily bread? Do, do you, do, are you, let, me, let me give us this day our daily bread. What does that mean? Is your daily bread the same as my daily bread? Heck no. Is your daily bread the same as your wife's daily bread? No. She's praying, Lord, let me live with him one more, one more day. You know? <laughs> now you're going, let me get through work one more day. That's your daily bread. Some of you need more bread than the other. Some of you have more responsibility. Than this. So you, when you're praying, you say, you're not saying give me my daily bread. You're saying give me my ability to get through this day and you know, take care of my family in this area. Lord, I'm believing for this situation for my wife and I. That's your daily bread. Put a name to it. Put a title to it. But it just don't say give us this day our daily bread because it is different for every one of us and the Lord wants to hear you say what your daily bread is. If you don't say what your daily bread is, you're not going to know that he was the one who gave it to you when it comes. It says be specific. You don't have because you've not asked according to God's word. Well, let's take a look at this. The, at the very beginning of this, it, it's quite amazing that in God's word, it says, he said, all right, this is it. Our Father, our Father, it, 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 it 
These are, this is the preamble. The beginning of the Lord's Prayer is the preamble, the introduction. It is, is introducing to whom you are praying to. It establishes you. You're not just praying to the air. You're not praying to, you know, Mother Earth. You, you establish who you're praying to, who is the authority who is going to say, yes, I'm giving it, no, I'm not giving it. Because we can ask boldly because... He is the final judge. I recognize he is the supreme being. He is my father. So in this preamble, in this statute, you're saying I am subjecting myself to this, to his rule, to his decision for my life. When you, when you subordinate yourself, that you, when you know that it's up to him, not you, you can boldly go to him. Does that make sense? I said, you know, Dad, can I ask you this? Sure, son. I want a new bike. You know, you don't walk in going, hey, I want a new bike. You see the difference? Dad, if it's possible, I want a new bike. I would love a new bike. Instead of walking in the door going, I need a new bike. I want it now. There's a difference of posture. So if you get a bike or don't get a bike, you when you have this opening statement and establishing you are the father, I am the child. Holy is your name. Whatever you decide, it is the right thing because holy is your name. And I, no matter if I get it or don't get it, holy is your name. You're taking a posture in that that allows us to be bold in what we ask for because at the end of the day or at the end of the week, if we don't get it, you're holy, you're the Father. That's your decision. That's your timing. Holy. I know uh, I was sharing this with uh, Crystal a couple days ago. What, she goes, what are you going to share? What are you going to teach? And I was making this first point. <clears throat> And she goes, well, you, you know, she goes, all your life you prayed that. Like at the end, I establish when I'm praying, and instead of just saying in Jesus' name, you know, I'll, I'll make my request. I said, and I say this in the name of the one who legally came to earth by virgin birth and died on the cross for my sins. I want to qualify that I am praying and I'm subordinate to that one. And that no matter what happens, it was his decision because it was him I made my request to. So I can make bold. I can go in boldly before him. Because I'm not saying that I'm worthy. I'm not saying that I deserve it. I'm saying that you are the Holy One. You are the Father. Now, here's what I can pray for. We need the preamble. We need the, 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 the statute of establishing who it is that we're praying to, the overriding principle that we are subject to his decision. If I'm subject to your decision, you know, it's, he goes, okay, thank you. What is it you want? Man, we can unload knowing that it's up to him and I can say what's on my heart. I can say my disappointment. It's, It's all wide open. It's not a repetitious prayer. It is a God at that moment. At this moment, I quiet my heart and I surrender to you. Here's my, here's my request. Here are my needs. It's yours. I am subject to you. There are so many people who are afraid to ask God for anything. You know, that's, let me tell you, establish your preamble. Who is it that you consider yourself less than. Who is your God? Is he holy? Then he's not going to give you something that's bad for you. And you may be asking for something that you can't handle. He's not going to give it to you just because you asked for it. He's God. It's not the secret of what you're saying. It's the man, the, the, the man God that you're talking to who loves you. So here we are. Our Father in heaven, heaven, what's above heaven? That's it. But it gets even even more descriptive. 
Holy be your name. Your kingdom, God lives in a kingdom. He's the king of his kingdom, and I'm putting myself in that kingdom. I'm recognizing with his kingdom in heaven as, you know, I want it to be on earth. So I'm making my subject to his kingdom, and he's the king, and he makes the decisions. Right? I'm placing myself in that kingdom. It's not here on earth. It says, man, the way it is in heaven, I want it to be on, on earth. And here's the first thing that's going to be this way on earth. It's going to be me. I'm subjecting myself under the leadership and the kingdom that you rule in heaven. This is not name it, claim it. This is making you know, yourself subordinate to what the Lord wants to give you, what he will give you, how he loves you. Your children have asked for stuff you never gave them because you know it wasn't good for them at the time. It wasn't safe for, you know, a dirt bike for a five-year-old is not a good thing. I don't care, just you don't do that for a five-year-old. You don't give a 14-year-old a new Mustang. You know, it's just, and that's how God is with us. So, oh, it's, so, it is us subjecting ourselves to this. And then it goes on. Once you, once, you've, once you have recognized and proclaimed this preamble, this introduction, and subjected yourself, this is the kingdom that I live in, and I'm under the king's rule. Now, you can say, give us today our daily bread. What's your daily bread? We already talked about it. What's your daily bread? And what's your daily bread tomorrow? What is tomorrow? It's different from today. That's why it can't be this repetition. Maybe not. But what is your daily bread? Say it specifically. It says, and forgive us our debts. I really like this one. Forgive us the things that we're indebted to. People we have, you know, we are indebted to, we didn't say we love them, but uh, people who owe us, people we owe them, it says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So basically, that for, forgive us of our sins as I forgive those who sinned against me. But you know what this, this is really is like? How, how many have made that, Lord, if you do this for me, I will never eat chocolate again. You know, I'll never say another curse word again. I'll never do this again. That's like, if you do, I do. You know, well, it's right here. It's here. I said, look, Lord, I forgive. I'm going to do this. You do that. I don't see a difference. Now, you don't have to give up chocolate unless you really want to. But this is, I do this, you respond. So you know what? He does respond to our when it comes to forgiveness. If I forgive those people, you know, I'll be forgiven by you. Huh. There is, there is a, a, a deal going on. It says, and lead us not into temptation. You know what? Don't get me near it because I'll taste it. Lead, Lord, you know what my temptation is. It is this. Help me with this. I need help. I please don't leave me, help me with this. Now, you got to watch out. When we, you know, I, I, my oldest daughter, um, you know, I don't, I'm sure every woman, every man has said this, Lord, I just want to lose 10 pounds. And she was sick some years ago with the flu, and she said she's like one flu away from her perfect weight. <laughs> you know, it's like, if I could just catch the flu again next week, I'm going to lose those 10 pounds. You know, so you don't, you don't know how the Lord's going to have you lose 10 pounds. So, but lead us not in temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. What's the evil one in your life? Are you praying about it? Are you asking God about it? You can. You can. Help us, protect us. So I have just 10 keys 
And here's the first, or not 10 keys, I think eight. I, I got rid of two, I combined some. Here's the first one, here's a shocker. Here's the first key about prayer. If you don't want to pray, don't. I thought we'd have at least one or two people get up and leave. <laughs> How dare you say that about prayer? Hey, if you don't want to pray, don't, because it's not accomplishing anything. Prayer is a privilege. I have the opportunity to talk to God, or i got to pray for supper. And you start thinking of all the biggest words you can come up so you sound better than anyone else in the room. Is that really crying out to a God for protection, for a blessing? It's a privilege, not a law. If you don't want to pray, don't. Somebody else will pray for you. Lord, that, that poor solo that can't pray. <laughs> Let me pray for him. You know, that's what's so wonderful about a family. Everyone, the second you think you have to pray, now you're in trouble. What happens when you go out to dinner and you go, we're going to pray for every meal. Okay, honey, we're going to pray for every meal. And it's, you're just getting a coffee and a donut. Does that qualify for a meal? It's like, oh, should I pray? Should I not pray? Should I pray? Should I not pray? Should I? How about a, a coffee and dessert? Is dessert prayer worthy? <laughs> and you're all tied up in this, should I pray? Should I not pray? Don't pray. Pray or don't pray, but do what is true to your heart, what you want to do, not who you're going to impress, not some little, little poem that you're going to think, all of a sudden, there's no calories in this, you know. There's calories. But then there's other people going, oh, I am a sinner, I don't pray. You know, you're missing out on a privilege to talk to a God who loves you. To cry out for these things. I need this. I need that. I want that. Oh, I live. It's a privilege. And that's really, it, it's, it's, it, it needs to start here. It's not a law. It's not an obligation. It's a privilege. It's a privilege because you're in need. You're in love. Let's... Um, You know, what I found that the more that I know about God, the more that I learn about God, it, it affects how I pray. It's how, I mean, if, if I know the Lord this way, it's going to affect how I pray. Uh, you know, if, you've, if you experience God as welcoming, you know, you're going to find that your prayers are welcoming. You're like, Lord, we just want to thank you and your Holy Spirit to hear if you've experienced him as welcome, you welcome him. You welcome the presence of God. He's creative. He's forgiving. He's honest. You know, I remember growing up, uh, we would study the names of God. People would give God names by how they experienced him, like Jehovah Jireh. That, that's what they would call him, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is my, my peace. He's my banner. He's the one that, that I reveal to everyone that I am trusting in. And so, because that's how they experience God, that's how they would pray. If you, if you experience this, the Lord is my peace, Jehovah Shalom, uh, Yahweh Shalom, it, it, it says, you know, I'm going to pray for peace. Your prayers are about peace, peace in the house, peace in Jerusalem, peace. How have you experienced God? It's going to shape the way you pray. If you experience him as a lawgiver, how are you going to pray? If you experience him as the scolder, the one who's standing over you to switch, how are you going to pray? So it's important for us to learn more about God because we get to pray according to the personality that we're experiencing, who he is to us. And it reinforces things in us. If you pray, thank the Lord that how he has forgiven you of your sins, let me tell you, that is what you, that's the God you're experiencing. That's the God that you know. And so as you get older, the more you learn, the, the more ways in different situations you'll learn how to pray. And it, 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 it's, it, it's a comforting. Number three, he loves to, us to call him Father. 
That's the name that he chose. He chose family. Who call him father. Uh, the, the, the respect, but the warmth that comes with that name. It's actually the, the language, the language of protection, the language of family. Say, Father. I know uh, Jared loves to pray, Father God. You know, when he prays up here, he goes, it's always Father God, Father God, Father God. It's in Psalms 68, it says, a father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God and his holy dwelling. Wow. Just a uh, uh, thought. Who, um, who, who says father when they pray? Look at that. That's the language of family. That's, that's, and that's what he wanted. He wanted to be known as the father. And one of the things about in the Hebrew culture is the father is the high position. You know, it may not seem that way today, but, but in the day, that was the highest position that you wanted to take. And, and Galatians 4, 4 says, when the time, when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. It's just the family language of God. Because you are sons, God sent his spirit of his son to our hearts. The spirit who calls out, Abba, Father, Daddy, Daddy. So you no no longer are slave, but God's child. Wow. Now number four. What has stopped you from praying? Yeah. Because, you know, the, the, the Lord's Prayer says, give us this day our daily bread. Are you praying for that daily bread? Are you accessing what it is you need to bring home today? So give us this day our daily bread. What has stopped you from praying? Uh, what have you stopped praying for? In Luke 18, Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and never give up. Hallelujah. What have you given up on in prayer? It just didn't happen. It just didn't happen. It didn't happen. I don't have the faith that's going. And Jesus himself had to go to the guys that he left behind. He said, guys, don't give up on prayer. He's talking what Jesus told the parable of the guy who kept going to the judge's door and knocking 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 and knocking. And the judge got up because I already settled this issue, but just to shut you up. It's yours. Don't give up. Don't give up. When you first were saved, you know, oh, every day you wake up, pray for this, pray for that, and then life's pretty good. We've given up on some things. Don't give up on asking what your daily, daily bread is. Don't give up asking, protect me from this. Don't get me near that temptation because I can't deal with that. Not just like, I'm give me the strength to overcome it. Just keep me away from it. I'm not up for that fight. What have we given up on? Will not God bring about justice for his elect who cry out to him, Day and night. Wow. Uh, prayer is an expression of our love, trust, and need. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not. I need him. I love him holy. It is so important for me that your name is holy. So I call out, holy is the Lord, God almighty. I, I need your help. I need you to keep me from this temptation. Don't lead me to that thing. Don't put me, help me. I'm honest, I don't know if I have the strength to stand against it. Just help me. Just, just. I need you. I love you. 
it is an expression of that trust. When you're asking the Lord, you know, some people are going, oh, you know, it's just uh, name and claim. It's, no, I'm crying out because I need the Lord. I need, I, I, I need my daily bread. I need this to be accomplished today. I need to bring this home for my family. I'm in need and I'm in love and I'm trusting. So I can say these things. If you don't trust somebody, you're not going to tell them. Number six, pray with reverence. It, it, said, our Father, holy is your name. What I like about this is that in Ecclesiastes, it tells us, in Ecclesiastes 5, verse 1, it says, guard yourself as you approach God. Guard yourself. It's not like we're going to get on our knees, we have to put on a robe, we have to wash our face. It just says, you know what? I don't want to approach God when someone has wronged me. I don't want to approach God when I'm in, in anger. I, and actually, when, when I'm in great despair, I might make one of those things. Lord, I'll never, ever love anyone again if you just help me get over this one. You don't make those vows because you don't know if God's going to honor it or not. There's too many people that we do in counseling that I said, have you ever made a vow? She said, I just can't completely give, me, give myself to this man or my husband. I said, have you ever made a vow in an old breakup or divorce saying, I'll never love again? Yeah. It's gone, so why do you think you can't give yourself to this guy or this woman? I'll never trust again. You know what you need to do? That's, that's when you approach God without, okay, wait a minute. I'm approaching a holy, righteous God. And he may give me what I want. But I'm doing this out of anger. I'm doing this out of hurt. I'm doing this out of fear. I'm doing this out of vengeance. He says, wait, guard yourself. Guard your heart. He says, just, just, don't, just don't just run out there in anger or complete hurt. I, many of you know that if you've made that vow before, I'll never fall in love. I'll never trust. I'll never trust anyone like this again. Guess what? You need to go back to the Lord and say, release me of that vow. Release me of that vow, Lord. He's honoring you. Now you need to honor his position as the holy God in heaven who you've subjected yourself under his kingdom here on earth. His kingdom isn't completely here on earth, but when it comes to you, it should be. So when you, when you do that preamble, it says, our Father, my Father, who's in heaven, let that have, I'm going to submit myself to that rule, your rule in heaven right now, and I'm asking to release me of that vow that I made with so-and-so, so-and-so about this. I was going up the hill and... In, 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 uh, Peru, and I was with a world-known pastor, Cesar Castellano, and we're going up in this little trolley thing up the mountain where the different uh, apartments or houses are, and it's just me and him, and you know, you and you're in the presence of uh, a man who God has completely favored, <clears throat> and uh, he goes, yes, he goes, I know you, of course, he doesn't speak any English, so it was, <laughs> it was difficult, his English and my Spanglish. And so we're going up. It's a good thing it was a long, slow. <laughs> and uh, he said, yes, I know, I know you. Um, and he asked me where I came from. And I said, yeah, I was at this big, huge ministry. Oh, yes, I know them well. And um, he said, what vows have you made? He goes, what's the size of your church? I said, oh, it's about 200, 150, 200. He goes, did you make a vow? To that? I go, yeah, that's all I wanted. I said, you know, I, I was a youth pastor and it's hard to manage people and being, feel, make them feel, t I just, he goes, you are hurt. He goes, you need to remove that vow. I went, excuse me? I mean, this was my goal. I reached my goal. We were 150 people. He goes, no, you made a vow. So, so you got 150 people in and everyone else goes to hell. I went, well, when you put it that way, <laughs> 
goes, open the doors and get everybody into heaven. I went, all right, you got a point. So right there in the middle of the afternoon, you know, going up in this little trolley. And I just said, Father, please. Release me of that vow. I'm telling you, it wasn't but two weeks after that that we blew past 100 people, 150 people. Release me of that vow. Some of us today need to make that same prayer. It may have been years ago. You've been hurt, and you say, I'll never be this open with anybody ever again. I'll never be this honest with anybody ever again. And you're not. No matter how hard you try, you need to go undo the vow. God has honored it. Guard yourself as you approach. The next is to pray with intimacy. Let me tell you, when, when you're in love, when you're in love, it's not about going before the Lord and asking for what you want. If you're really in love with God, if you really wanted to start to fall in love with prayer, you're going to go before the Lord and give him what he desires. That's love. Giving him what he desires. You see, it's, it's not this wish or this Santa Claus. He's going, oh, I so love the Lord, and all they do is ask for thanks. How about going to the Lord and say, Lord, what would you have me do for you? Would you, because, you know why? Because I love you. And it's about your desires, not just mine. Do you pray that way? That's love. Lord, I, I want your name to be holy. So when I pray, I call you holy. I want you to be my God, so I claim you as my God. Who art in heaven. What does he want you to do? What are his desires for you? That's love. That's love. Are you amazed with prayer? Some people aren't. And this is the confidence that we have towards him, that if we ask anything according to his, his we, what is it, we, it's going to be answered. He hears us. He will hear us. It's going to be answered. It says, it, 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 the other verse, it says that he's going to attend to our prayers. Attend. That's not like, oh, no, I thank you, I heard you. No, it says he's attending. His attention is turned to your prayer. And from his holy seat, he makes the decision if this is going to be answered now or this way or that way. Or no. If people ask God for an answer you know, uh, to a question and they don't hear anything, guess what? The answer is no. No is an answer. Some people don't realize that, but no is an answer. But we can boldly go to the Lord because he's the judge and I'm settled with it. I have settled that he is in charge. And when he's in charge and I recognize his authority, I can ask whatever I want because I'm okay if he says no. He's God. And he's holy. Ask. Ask. Set up the, that preamble, that statute, that law. He's the Lord and I've subject myself to his rule. If he answers yes or no, he's my God. Just as Paul, the apostle Paul, says he's singing. And he said his soul is set free and he was singing from prison. He wasn't in prison. His body was in prison. But his, his spirit was set free. Because he was living under the kingdom of God. Though they threw him in prison. And it was God's will to get him out. Free yourself today. If you made that vow when we pray. Or you may, you may not be thinking. You may not, it may not come to you. But it will come to you later today. What that vow that you made years ago. Just say, Lord, holy God, I want to be under your kingdom. I want to be under your decision, your rule. Free me of this vow. Tomorrow, 
realize it's, it's, it's an amazing thing and a privilege to say, Lord, this is what I'd like to see accomplished today. Help me get to that place. Help me get to this day, my daily provision that I need. It is this, this, and this. And I'll be happy with what gets done because I've given it to you. You are my Lord. Let's stand. Wow. Did you learn anything about prayer today? It's a privilege. I am talking to a real God who attends my prayer. My heart may be broken in this situation, but somehow when you come away from it, your prayer has been attended to. It's been attended to. You're praying to someone who's there. Who's there. So, Father, we want to thank you that you've given us the privilege of prayer. That you attend our prayers. That we can throw ourselves into your kingdom and come under your rule. And that you will make that decision. That we can boldly come and ask whatever. Knowing that sometimes you may say no. But you say ask and give me a chance to say no. Ask. And it might be given to you. Ask. You can trust. You can trust the Lord that whatever he has is because of his love and protection for us. So, Father, thank you for that. Thank you that we can boldly do this because of the work of your son who died for our sins. That you can hear our prayers. All we got this, all I have, Lord, is this wow. Just wow. As we leave, let us go with your presence, your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone said, have a wonderful day. Woo!